Drug Enforcement Administration is moving closer to reclassifying marijuana from a dangerous Schedule 1 drug to a lesser Schedule 3. What this means is it will allow for easier research and recognize the medical use for cannabis. It could help provide tax breaks. It will not legalize marijuana, but reclassifying it could also ease criminal penalties and help marijuana businesses bank more freely. The White House Office of Management and Budget still has to approve, and that process could take months. So let's dig a little bit deeper on what this reclassification really means. America Tonight medical contributor Dr. Omar Awan joins me now. Dr. Awan, thanks for being with us. You write that there's growing evidence that marijuana has therapeutic benefits. And like so many other things, you also share concerns about reclassifying it. So I'm wondering if you could walk us through some of those concerns. Yeah, Maritza, I'm very concerned about this uh, classification because although, as you said, marijuana is still going to be illegal on a federal level, it does normalize the use of marijuana and it makes it more accessible to the general public. And I think it's important to remember that marijuana is a drug, so it does have harmful effects on individuals. So there's a growing body of evidence that, yes, it does treat things like chronic pain, it does treat nausea and vomiting in cancer patients, but it absolutely can have harmful effects. We know through evidence that it can affect one's ability to learn, one's attention, one's ability to perform well and to make judgments. Uh, there's growing body of evidence that if you smoke it, it has the same carcinogens and toxins as smoking has so that you can develop certain chronic conditions like bronchitis and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And even new research that was submitted at the uh, American Heart Association in Philadelphia at the conference shows that it's linked to increased rates of even heart attack and heart failure. So. Definitely, there are major concerns when it comes to public health, when it comes to one's own health. And as marijuana gets more normalized, more people are going to use marijuana and we're going to start to see these harmful and detrimental effects in the general public. So to play devil's advocate here, Dr. Awan, a lot of people say that, you know, medicinal marijuana, maybe not smoked, has been very beneficial to things like um, migraines or nausea or any kind of other ailments, maybe if they're having trouble eating. So what would you say to those folks who say, well, hold on, should I be worried? I, I use this regularly for medicinal purposes. I think we should because, you know, the bottom line is, is that there, although there is a less potential for abuse uh, than let's say alcohol or heroin, there still is a potential for abuse. Remember that 30% of people that take marijuana develop marijuana use disorder. What that means, Marie says, is that people are taking marijuana despite the fact that it's uh, preventing them from doing well in school or from doing well at work or carrying on with their normal, regular activities. That's 30% of people. So that's not a small number. That means that with 48 million people taking marijuana, that means that more than 14 million Americans are gonna suffer from marijuana use disorder. So absolutely there are medical applications of marijuana, but you know, 14 million Americans is not a small number. And I fear that this will continue to be amplified as marijuana continues to get used and it becomes normalized in American culture and American society. So reclassifying this as a lower risk drug actually um, puts it into the category of prescription drugs like anabolic steroids. And I know that we said that this does not legalize marijuana, but do you see this as a path to legalization? Well, it, yes, in some respects, because, you know, we're talking about, you know, half of the United States, it is already legalized, you know, on a, on a state level recreationally. And then in at least 38 states in the United States, it's legalized in a medicinal level. So uh, absolutely, it makes it a little bit easier to prescribe. Uh, physicians will probably feel a little bit more comfortable about doing it without getting any backlash. Uh, and I think with time, it becomes accepted. It just becomes accepted. I mean, if it's in the same category as anabolic steroids, uh, ketamine, I mean, these are drugs that are generally accepted, you know, in terms of, you know, their use. So marijuana being in that same category, it does have some uh, ramifications and implications with respect to how accepted the drug is going forward. So I did a story, a series of stories many years ago about the methamphetamine epidemic, especially in states like Montana, where we are tonight. I was shocked to find out that meth was a Schedule II drug lower than marijuana. I mean, do you see the potential for other classifications of drugs to be modified here? There is a potential, but the thing is, is that the way classifications work is it depends on the potential for abuse, the potential for addiction and medical applications. So definitely, I mean, marijuana 
probably does fit in the schedule three category, but these categories are flawed inherently, right? Because it doesn't take into account the public health effects or the health effects of the drug. So definitely there are medical applications of marijuana. There's no doubt about it. And there are less potential for abuse with marijuana compared to other drugs like heroin. But that doesn't mean that it's a safe drug. Just because it's a schedule three or a schedule four doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a completely safe drug. So I think Americans have to really understand that on a you know granular level. Okay, America Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Omar Awan, as always, thank you so much. We appreciate your insight, and we will be right back.